morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We have to get started here. I'd like to welcome you to the People's Church of Divine Prophecy here in Daytona Beach. As you can see, Ronnie's not here today. He's not invisible. He's just not here. He's had some uh, family problems that's pulled him away to uh, North Carolina. So he's going to be up there this week, and I was unable to get a filling musician. On top of that, I think he took the uh, pre recorded music we have, so we're all on our own for the music. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if you guys don't sing up, you're going to not come back. You <laughs> so, need to kind of pick up the voice when we sing. This is where we do a reading by the pastor, and this is just some thoughts to think about through the week that have come to me through last week. Yes, it just seems like the uh, energy of the time, just a lot uh, that we're faced with now. A lot of personal issues, a lot of spiritual issues, and we seem to, most people seem to be in a state of flux with all of this. Everybody I talk to seems to be going through very similar things. Personal issues with family, financial issues and challenges, and questing about their spiritual belief. These times do tend to produce that. And what I always find is while I may re-examine my statements about my spiritual belief, I still have this core of faith within my heart. Even though the way that I say it, the way that I read it changes, there is an underlying core of belief in God in my heart, no matter what the words are, no matter what the philosophy is. And this comes from a time of quiet every morning. It's like knowing that you have a father and knowing that you have a mother. Not much can change that. You know you have that. And there's that same belief on a deeper level of knowing that you have God supporting you throughout the day. The sureness of it. Even through the emotional turmoil, the challenges, you still have that feeling of that, that steadiness I do anyway. And this produces a freedom for me because of time, many years ago in my life, and I joke about it saying it was my hedonist experience, I didn't really look past the moment, I didn't really look past the event that I was involved in, and not much mattered to me other than the people that were immediately there, and not much mattered other than the immediate events that were going on. What believing in something greater than myself has given me is the ability to see the world in a much broader and more true sense around me. It, it doesn't mean that I don't have heart challenges. It doesn't mean that when somebody I care about does something that harms them or me, that I don't feel it. But I feel that knowing that this life's journey is what it's about. The journey is the key, not the end of it. Living the journey, paying attention to the journey, that's what this life is about. So I'd like to leave that with you just for a few moments of thought that have gone through my mind this week. And it, it, does, it behooves me to sit down at least once a week and recap everything that's going on, not necessarily event by event, but more as an overall experience. How do I feel about this past week? And put that into a spiritual perspective rather than going event by event by event because sometimes some of these events are better off just let go of them instead of sort it out. So think of the whole week or even if you do it on a daily basis as a total experience, not as an individual experience. And that will bring the presence of God into you. It doesn't mean anything. I guess we're going to stand and try the first hymn. <laughs> I'm asking for a little help from above and the here, so I guess we'll try some simple ones. Um, how about hymn number six, the first and last verse? <laughs> Praying, Lord, 
I thought you would leave the singing this morning. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see so many lovely faces this morning and nice to be back. I don't know whether it's nice to be back in Florida or not, but uh, it was 109 degrees for a few weeks up north and uh, that. But the heat up there is altogether different. There's no humidity. So I get home here and I'm dealing with the humidity. So uh, it's sort of a strange feeling to be back. This morning I would like to talk about fear. This was one of my big things that up north I had a chance to uh, take care of my sister and help her to get back onto the road of good health. She's 93 years old and when she left here she couldn't walk, she couldn't dress herself, and she couldn't go to the bathroom by herself. So due to my niece and my nephew, they got her so she could get up, get her dressed. By the time I got up north in June, I says, okay, we've got to stop all this here goofing off and that, and we're going to start, when we both were in the nursing home together, we're going to start doing her exercises. So I started her exercising. She said, there, oh no, oh no. And I count one, two, three, four, five, and she said, oh no, I can't go any further. Well, I've got her up to 40, doing her exercises up and out and all of this, and her legs and everything. And uh, that got her so she could do her own breakfast, do her dishes. Got her so she could get her own lunch. And that now, and do her dishes. And then she would start, I says, okay, you gotta start helping with dinner. So she started helping cutting the vegetables up and getting, helping with dinner. So, that was my main goal. So she's 93 years old, she's back in her own home where her son said she'll never come back to this place again. And we fooled them all. So that is having some letting go of a lot of fears, which she had, and a lot of fears which we all have. How many have a fear of a dog? Just raise your hand if you have a fear of a dog. Nobody? You do? Oh. Okay, that's good. I will tell you a little story. Years ago, we had a center coordinator who was definitely afraid of dogs. And she would walk, take her walk to the center every day and take care of our center. And, that, and she always carried this big stick. She was so afraid of dogs. She was afraid of a little dog like this, not alone a big dog like that. So, we have a seminar called Creative Energies, and it's also called the Trinity Seminar. So we says, okay, we're going to get you free of all 
the dogs and all the animals. So what we do is pretend by like Alice in Wonderland. All right? You just close your eyes and you relax and you bring a dog into your rate of vibration. And you tell the dog your name and you give the dog as the dog its name. All right? You can try this at home. Ask Jacqueline about it, all right? And just see the dog, and then send the dog love. The dog, in turn, will send you love. And you overcome your fears. That's all. I may have a fear of cats. I know one person, I own the husband, has the biggest fear of cats and that. And, uh, I had a cat, and she would come to class, and then she said, don't let the cat come in the room, all right? Because she'd go bonkers. She absolutely would go out of her mind with this cat. So we don't let the cat any place where she is. Uh, what about snakes? Anybody have a fear of snakes? Oh, well, don't be so shy back there. Okay. Okay, everybody close their eyes for a minute, okay? And just hold your hands out in your laps, all right? Take two or three deep breaths, and then, okay? And now I just would like you to picture a beautiful little garter snake in your hand. Everybody picture a garter snake in their hand. All right, tell the garter snake your name. If you don't have a garter snake, maybe you have a big cobra. It's all right. It doesn't matter what size snake or what kind of snake it is. Just picture a snake, all right? Okay? And now tell the snake its name, and you give it your name. And then, send it love. And then, say to yourself, free not, fear not, for I am with thee always. For God is flowing through you now. And there is no fear, there is no fright, with anything you come into, all right? Now, when you're sitting there, I would like you to picture a cockroach in your hand. See some people squirming, all right? S send the cockroach a lot of love. Tell it your name. All right? And ask the cockroach its name. And fear not, for God is flowing through you, all right? Now, you can take and show it a lot of love, put it down on the floor. Put your cockroaches down on the floor for me. Everybody put their cockroach down on the floor, all right? Now, if you want to step on it, say evolve, out loud. You just took that, that that lovely cockroach and allow it to evolve into its next life, all right? How many people are afraid of water? Anybody afraid of water? Nobody? How about somebody having something around their neck that they don't wear anything around their neck? You know why? Think about it. It all has to do with your memory cells in your body. All right? These memory cells in your body are carried over from lifetime after lifetime after lifetime in your spinal column. So if you have a fear of something around your neck, what happens is, is that if I went up to you and put my hands around your neck, what would happen? <laughs> You know what I did to you at one lifetime? 
I chopped off your head. All right. So this is why this is why you can't stand anything around your neck. And it was in France, and it was in the 1800s. So I'm asking for your forgiveness, and I am forgiving you for doing what you did do to put you in that situation. Okay? Can you forgive me? <laughs> Can I send you lots of love? Yes. Okay. All right. This is how it all works. Everybody has a fear at some time something happens to them. We all come across different things in our life, different paths. We come across an individual. And it's all happened to all of us. It's either a deja vu or it's something that we get into somebody's rate of vibration that we don't like that person. Correct? Is there anybody here that gets into somebody's vibration and they don't like that person? Right. It's, it's a thing that we have a carryover from a past life. All right. Something in a past life has come in and that to disturb us. And it happens to all of us. 365 times in the Bible it says, fear not. For I am always with you. Fear not. Fear not. Is faith in God. All right? It gets rid of all negativity. All of these things, there is fear in love, but perfect love, love casts out fear. That is in 1 John 4 18. All right? There is one that I like probably the best. That is in Isaiah. Uh, I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. There is so many verses in the Bible about fear and why if we become fearful of anything what happens is, is we have to negate it we have to get rid of it um, when I said is, does anybody have any fears I didn't get any hands up here but everybody has a fear of some sort don't we is there anybody in the room that has no fear? How many have a fear of dying? Okay. That's the only two back there that have a fear of dying? Well, I guess when you die twice, like I did, you have no fear. All right? You can figure out, okay, it's just beautiful, it's beautiful, it's light. Everything's at peace. You see all your family members. You see everybody and that. And then all of a sudden, on the other side, you get everybody, your relatives, my parents, that all shaking their head at me like this. All right? Saying, it's not your time. All right? So that took me over the fear of being on the other side. But we all have this fear. So the most important thing is, is to keep saying over and over and over again, fear not, for I am always with thee. And it's become when I wake up in the morning, I say, fear not, for God is always with me. Because God is the infinite. God is the thing that flows through us. What was the first thing God gave you when you woke up, when you came into this world? Can anybody tell me? Breath. Thank you. He gave us breath. All right? And everything that's happened to you in this lifetime, what has happened? It's all been a lesson. Whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. How we handle it? Steve has had a lot of overcoming and a lot of lessons. He's been put through his paces more than I have. But there is this thing about being 
with the oneness, being with God 24-7. And as soon as you realize that you are with Him 24-7, then everything in your life flows inwardly. Until we hit a bunker. Kathy said she has. She's hit a lot of bunkers. All right? It's a challenge for us to overcome. It's a lesson for our soul growth. Everything that we do in this lifetime is for our own soul growth. And how we overcome and how we perceive it and how we overcome all these things, it's for us to learn. It's not for your daughter, your son, your loved one, your lover. It makes no difference. It all has to do with you. It has to do with your energies. It has to do with your energy vortex. It all has to do with you. It's nobody else's fault. You can't blame anybody for anything that happens to you. You can't blame your husband. If your husband whacks you around a few times, then what do you do? You get up and you leave. But you don't stay and take it. If somebody's abusive, if a woman's abusive to a man and hen pecks them and that, not unless you enjoy it. But I got up and left twice in my life. Okay? Because you don't need it in your right, greater vibration. It's what it is, though. It's a growing thing for your soul. That's all it is, is a growth period. So today, just remember that God is with you, God is within me, and there is no fear. Once you realize that there is no fear, you're going to sail like a sailboat, free going, free will, because we all have free will. I did so much meditating up north, I had time to be still. I had time, for the first time in my life, to read something that was not religious, or be on something that was not uh, metaphysical, or something to go with my own teachings and my own classes that I've been able to, things that I've been able to come up with. And I re I've read 16 books. I don't know how many of you people saw the movie The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but uh, the book is more is better than the, the original, uh, the movie. The uh, You've seen the three, the three movies? The three books? Yeah. And then I've got now, what is the, how many shades of gray? Fifty shades of gray. How many people have read that? Nobody? <clears throat> I heard that it's a raunchy book. And my nephew says to me, he says, I'm not letting you read this book up here. <laughs> so he gave me all these murder mysteries and novels and that to read and the Iron Man and all these other different books, all right? He says, he says, you can't read it up here. And I says, why? He says, well, he says, I'll tell you. He says, it's a little bit raunchy in certain parts. And he says, I don't want you to get too excited. So he says, he points to his head and he says, and it can all be mental, you know. <laughs> so I had to come home, buy the book, so I can now read the book and see what it's all about. But um, it is a time when getting away, getting away from everybody, getting away from that, and just being able to meditate, being able to be with your own self, being with God 24-7, it is something that, Actually, I had a lot of healing going on with my own self. 
Uh, so it's a, actually, it's probably one of the best things that can happen to you. And with that, I say God bless you.